This an all out blitz. Real hard hits. The mother podcast trash. We gon' make them all quit. We cover all the topics with intelligence and logic. I know you wanna score, but ID gon' stop it. We from Texas. So that mean that we Texans. Breaking down the X's and O's, our profession. No complaining, just training. You see the progression. They had a pro bowl for talk shows. We get selected. We gon' celebrate every win like a birthday. Ray J with the news. First with all the updates. Spin move on the competition. Yeah, we juking them. You not really in touch if you not tuning in. This is Crin Sharp Briggs and VT. We want the touchdown. We not trying to go for three. And it's best if you get up out the street. Cause them bulls out the pen and they bout to stampede. Hey everyone, welcome to the Texans Fan Battle Podcast. Of course, I'm your host, Matthew Briggs. As always, I have my amazing trio, but we are one sort. So I'll just introduce my little but big brother, Mr. VT. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And guys, if, if you're a Texans fan, you know this guy very well from the wheelhouse and from the Jake Asma show on YouTube. We got Mr. Jake Asma. How are you doing, sir? What's up, guys? Appreciate you having me on. I am uh I'm very jealous. I'm not a Texans fan, man. I mean, I it, t- it took me leaving Houston after five years for the Texans to have this much excitement around them. So you're welcome, Houston. You guys are <laughs> again. Well, I'm glad you said that because we got a, a comment that this per- this is perfect. Always get to hear from good old former warehouse host, even though he's a Jets fan. <laughs> you know, hey, it, they're both entertaining to watch. So I mean, at least they're not disappointed on, on that aspect either. You know. So, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of similarities, honestly. Right? I mean, like, I, yeah, I, I, Robert Sala, the Jets coach, is getting a lot of heat. But I look at it like this: like one guy with the second overall pick got C.J. Stroud, the other guy got Zach Wilson. You know, I think they're right. very similar. But quarterback means everything, and, and what Stroud has done has completely changed uh, the outlook for the Texans. Not just this year, but you know, you would think this will probably be if they do it right, the least talented roster he has around him. So you talk about the future. And the opportunity to build with him as he continues to still get better. I mean, if I if I was a Texan fan, if I was still doing afternoon radio on ESPN Houston, I'd be probably making that point time and time again that it's only going to go up from here, Texans fans. Oh, most of right. Me. Well, guys, we only have Jake for a short time, so we're going to kick it. We usually do NFL news, but we're going to skip that, and we're going to jump into some Texans news. Uh, Dylan Horton today is stepping away from football. Uh, rumors are that he's having kind of a mental health uh, issue. Uh, Jake, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, without without really knowing, you know, a ton of information, I just wish him well. Uh, you know, obviously, for a guy to step away in the middle of the season, you know, it's not like the Texans are a bad team, right? They're playing meaningful games here down the stretch. So um, without without knowing what the deal is, you just wish him well and you hope everything's okay with him and his family, et cetera. Yeah, and, I, and he's not having a bad year either. Uh, uh, you know, as a, a rotational player and a rookie, like he's making some some uh, big plays. So, uh, yeah, you're right. Hopefully, uh, everything is all right, and pray praying for you. Uh, BT, what do you thought? Yeah, um, similar to you. Like I, I have those same uh, sentiments. But the one thing that I really hope they do is I hope they don't knock him off the payroll, like put him up on N- NFI or whatever it is, um, because. You know, he's not vested. He's not a vet. He doesn't get any health care or anything like that. So, you know, if he needs mental health care or whatever the case is, I'm not going to think to speculate what it is, but whatever help he needs, I hope he gets it. And I hope they keep him somewhere on the payroll for that so he can get the help. Because, like I said, like, he's a rookie, really. I mean, like, he he doesn't get any help, you know, like, you know, no health care, no nothing. I know a lot of people don't really realize that. But if it's your first year in the NFL and you get a career, career ending injury or you can't play anymore for whatever reason, you're shut out of luck. So I hope the Texans do right by him. Yeah, same. Um, moving on to uh, some injury news. Drew Scruggs finally making his debut. Uh, Jake, are you excited? Yeah, I mean, look, they, they clearly like him. They traded up to get him at the end of the second round. So uh, he's kind of like the unknown commodity, uh, if you could call it that, to this point. You know, it's am- it's amazing what they have dealt with on the offensive line this year, and it still had – the success they've had. I mean, to see C.J. Stroud win games at one point this year with, what, four of his five uh, starting linemen out of the lineup, it's just – it really has been unbelievable. So, you know, we'll see we'll see what he could provide, you know, if they put him in right away, if they kind of ramp him up slowly. But, hey, hey, more depth this time of year, the better. It's almost like making a trade deadline move potentially 
um, that obviously you had kind of, you know, in, in the back door, you try and slide in now. So we'll see what he can do. I We, we know they love him because of where they drafted him, but where is he going to play right away? Is he going to play right away? What's the timeline on how long it takes him to get up to speed? That's going to be fascinating. Yeah, uh, and you, you would say, like you said, the, the uh, about the injuries to the offensive line, if you were to tell somebody that the, the – Attacks to the Steelers and the Jaguars, nobody would believe you. So, right. it, you know, it, it's good to have him back. BT, what's your opinion on it? My opinion is I love that he's back because obviously you don't want to have any player that you drafted uh, in the second round um, on IR. But are we really willing to replace what we have right now? I mean, the, the line is really performing. Um, you know, we went from CJ having to run around to having him almost have three seconds in the pocket. Three seconds is great, right? I mean, like, and he actually sometimes has a little bit more than three seconds. What I don't think that he's going to, like, I I thought that he was going to come back for the Jags game. Obviously, it's a little late in order for him to actually play. I don't think he's going to start. I think maybe he'll have a couple of reps. Um, I don't know if he will. But basically, the bottom line is Jeter's doing a good enough job where it's almost like you say, you're going to sit behind here and only play if we really need you, like Dieter getting hurt or something like that. Because right now the line is jiving. I wouldn't change it. Um, I understand that we draft him to play this uh, position, but he might have to just sit on the sidelines right now. Yeah, the only thing that could uh, that can change it is uh, maybe put Howard back at right tackle and put uh, Juice there at left guard or Dieter. But, uh, yeah, I, I kind of side with UVT. You got something – Offensive line is not something you want to mix and match every game. It's something you want every game so that way they have cohesiveness and, uh, you know, uh, chemistry. So I kind of uh, side with you, VT. I hope they keep it the same, but who knows? Yeah, we got real quick, we got a, a comment from our uh, family of, of the Figgy Fig. He said, am I looking at this? Jake, the Zach Wilson truther. <laughs> uh, what's up, Figgy? Miss you, brother. Hope all is well. All right. And going back to uh, – we got Desmond King back on the practice squad. Uh, VC, I'll start with you. What do you think about this? Love it. Don't think he should have ever left. I think he really was just, um, you know, a roster casualty. I don't think it was because they didn't want him. I think, you know, you can only have, obviously, a certain amount of players, and he just happened to – um, be the one that was cut. Uh, I think that he's a great depth piece. Uh, I think that Tavi will continue to play the nickelback position. But I think that, you know, we've had so many injuries in the secondary that honestly, it's a critical pickup. Um, you know, I think that, you know, Disman King can literally play all over um, in the secondary. That's one of his, that's one of his strengths. And he obviously brings a vet presence. So I don't necessarily know how they're going to use him because I know that they want to use Tavi a lot. But at the same time, you need someone in you need someone in that secondary. We've been getting hit hard. We've had three safeties get hurt already, right? And two of them on, on IR. Um, obviously, Stingley was hurt for a very long time. Shaq got hurt a little bit. Uh, Jimmy Ward now was hurt. So, like, you know, we had so many injuries in that secondary. We need the depth. Jake, you kind of agree? Yeah, no question. I mean, he, he's been a good player in this league before. So, to have that guy in your practice squad who's got that type of experience, I mean, who knows you? You're always one game away from needing to promote him to the 53. So, uh, you know, look, more depth, the better this time of year. Texans, I don't need to tell you guys this. I mean, they probably lead the league in, like, the longest injury report of all time uh, some of these weeks. So uh, getting getting him back, I, I mean, low risk and maybe a high reward. Who knows? And, and uh, to address that comment, I just want to address that comment that, that no, asked whether – Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. I just – I, I just wanted to say, like, there is a chance, unfortunately. And, and I said unfortunate because that would mean that someone else is getting hurt. But I think that's one of the reasons why they're picking them up, is right. that they'll throw them back there if, if they need to. And that's one of his strengths. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, news conference today. Uh, Bobby Sloak said he wanted to split uh, carries between P Pierce and Singletary. Uh, Jake, smart move, or should Singletary be the all down back? Well, no, no one is truly like an every down back in like today's NFL, but you know, Slowly can say whatever he wants publicly. Let's be real. Singletary needs more touches at this point. I don't know mm -hmm. if Pierce is the best scheme fit for what they do with this West Coast style offense. I don't know if, you know, uh, for whatever reason, maybe Pierce is not, you know, as healthy as, you know, maybe they're letting on. But for whatever reason, he hasn't been the same guy that we saw last year where before his injury, you know, he was pacing to be a, you know, 1300-yard running back. So uh, I think both guys are certainly going to play a role. 
based on what we have seen from Singletary these last couple of games, he should be the guy that's getting most of the touches. And you know what? If if Pierce maybe is challenged by that, that fires him up, that gets him going, then good. Competition is always good in that spot. So uh, I think Slowick could say whatever he wants publicly. I think actions will speak louder than words when it comes to the usage of both those guys. All right. Well, wise words. BT, what about you? Jake, I hope you're right. Um, you know, when I heard that, um, saw that clip, you know, my heart dropped a little bit because Singletary has okay. been kicking butt and Pierce really hasn't been doing well. And, you know, I, I mean, I love Damien Pierce. I thought he did a great job last year. But, you know, when it, I think part of the reason is he lost weight, um, you know, about 10 pounds or so. So he's not he's not able to go through linebackers like he used to. Um, and he's not able to fit the scheme. He doesn't follow his blockers a lot, a lot of times. Uh, and so he has a lot of issues. A lot of times it seems like he actually just goes towards contact as opposed to green grass. I have a lot of issues with Damian Pierce. And Singletary seems to be a little more agile. Um, he, he follows his blockers when necessary. He We've had some of the biggest runs with him. Obviously, our best games have been with him, 150 yards. You're talking Derrick Henry yards at that point. Um and I know, we, it, you know, people say, oh, it's against a Cincinnati uh, team that's bad against, you know, the run. But so was Carolina and we did nothing. You right. know, so it's, you know, so the thing is, I want to see Singletary have the bulk of the carries. If Damian Pierce gets five carries or so, fine. But if we're splitting carries like 50-50, that's going to be a problem. I know we're going to talk, obviously, about the people this game soon, but the Jacks are actually really good against the run. And um, I do not want to see us taking – down after down after down, negative yardage because Pierce can't figure that out. You got something that's working. This is a major game. Don't fuck it up with Pierce. Let Singletary have the have the have the majority of the carries and throw in Pierce on you know maybe those short yardage situations, maybe those goal line situations, but nothing more than that. Yeah, I mean we all said it. Scheme fixes everything, right? And uh, Singletary, he's used to the zone blocking scheme. Uh, so you got you got to put him. He knows more about it. Uh, he knows how to use it correctly. Uh, I'm with VT. I think you just put him third goal, fourth down situations, touch goal line. Like uh, I, I love some Pierce, but you got to be smart about it. Well, let's get down to the recap of the Texans versus Cardinals, 21 to 16. Uh, we already kind of gave a recap on Sunday, but Jake, what did you see during this game? Man, I, you, you you love the fact the Texans found a way to not fall into the trap because this was a classic, and it's weird saying this given what the expectations were for the Texans coming into the year, but this was a classic trap game. You have this great emotional win the previous week. You come in, another game at home. You don't want to look ahead to the Jaguars, which could decide the division and having a home playoff game because you had to get through Arizona first. And for the mm -hmm. Texans to still find a way to win where they didn't play their best, where Stroud was great in the first half, but then starts to turn it over a lot in the second half. But the defense able to step up this time when, you know, for example, against Atlanta, they couldn't get that last stop. Like, you saw the growth of the team. You saw them avoid the trap. I thought it was a really good coaching effort, and I thought it was just a great team win that kind of shows you the Texans are more than just C.J. Stroud. Like, the, the last play of the game, the fourth down stop, Will Anderson getting pressure in Kyler's face like that. That's like Nick Casario's dream when they made those picks, like that moment playing out in a game like that. So uh, for the Texans to win that game and set themselves up for arguably the biggest game that NRG Stadium has seen since the playoff game against the Bills in 2019. Uh, they had to win this first game first. They took care of business, and now they set themselves up for this division showdown. But that was a complete team win, and it, I think it showed a lot about this coaching staff and this Texans team. Yeah, uh, I have to agree with you. Uh, a lot of people are upset about the the game play, uh, the game play from C.J. Stroud, but you got to keep telling everybody he's a rookie. Like, he's going to make those mistakes. But you can also turn on the hand, if all those interceptions was in the red zone, if those weren't interceptions, it was a touchdown. This game is completely out of hand, and it's not close. Like, it's a it's a blowout. So, people need to, real, you know, chill out. You know, C.J. Stroud is still C.J. Stroud. You know, he's still growing. He's still a rookie. BC, what about you? What do you think? Yeah, so first of all, um, even though CJ Stroud had three interceptions, uh, gotta say, even though he had a bad game, he still threw for threw for over 300 yards and two touchdowns. Um, so yeah, bad game, but 300 yards, um, that's pretty insane. Uh, another thing to note is that Patrick Mahomes has only had three games where he's had over 260 air yards, meaning that there's no yak involved. We're talking just 
uh, how much the ball has been through the air. In his entire career, he's had 260, and Stroud has done this just in the past three games. So, I mean, the level that Stroud is having, despite his three interceptions, which is a learning experience, and by the way, one was on Robert Woods completely. Man. But, you know, beside – even even despite that, he is growing exponentially week by week by week. So no, um, uh, to the people that have DM me and asked me, am I worried? No, absolutely not. Uh, you knew that he had to have a bad game. Yeah, he's a rookie. How, how is he going to have a perfect uh, season? Really, right? So he made he made a couple mistakes. Like I said, one was on Woods, and and these are the things you want to do in the regular season so you learn from the learn from them and don't make those same mistakes in the postseason. I got a shout out to the defense because I definitely did not give them enough credit. I did not think that the defense could actually help us win a game. I actually really just thought it was going to be the offense, but you had Cashman balling out best linebacker by far Stingley, who has been hurt, but made some really good plays, the interception of the pass deflections, Steven Nelson for the game winning pass deflection. Will Anderson coming out there with the sack, stopping the run Um, Kadar Holman, some, uh, a dude that, Literally got me picked up off the street and, you know, is kicking butt. Grenard with the sack. I mean, both our edges are are, are playing well. Uh, defense really came out there and said, listen, offense, you've been bailing us out game after game. We got you this week. And they did that. And I love that for the Texans. Yeah, same. Uh, and but especially Tank Dell, uh, the dude is quickly becoming one of the best rookie receivers in the league. And I, I love it. Keep it Houston, you know. I'm glad he's from U of H. Let's keep it going. Uh, well, let's jump to the game preview uh, of the Jaguars. Uh, Jake, since we have really on short time, what do you think the Texans need to do to win this game? Look, Stroud's going to have to play. I don't want to say you know turnover free because that, maybe that's not realistic, but he can't have three interceptions in this game. And you know, obviously, they weren't all his fault as we brought up just before. But look, you're at home. I think the key for the Texans to start fast, man. Like the, the Jaguars are the ones who have more pressure on them in this game than the Texans do. The Texans have already beaten Jacksonville once. The Jags were supposed to win this division easily. No one even gave any other team in that division a real chance. The Jaguars were huge favorites to win the AFC South. And here are the Texans, one of the biggest surprises, if not the biggest surprise in the NFL this season. So I think if the Texans could start fast, like 7 nothing. I think that goes a long way. I think Jacksonville could be a little tight in this one. I think it's a good matchup. Uh, for the Texans. I think if they win the turnover battle, I know it's cliche, but I think that truly matters in a game that really could be decided along the margins. I think the, I think both quarterbacks will probably play well. I think an extra possession or two by whichever team gets it could truly decide this one. All right. I love it. BT. Something to uh, keep in mind is that I, I do think it's going to be a good quarterback battle, but I just have to say um, I've been naming Trevor Lawrence T-Fraud, and there's a reason for that. So um, Justin Fields, prior to this pre this previous week, Justin Fields had more passing touchdowns than Trevor Lawrence. Um, he's had not a great season. He went against the Titans defense that really doesn't have a, a secondary to speak of. He balled out, though. I will say that, yeah, he had two passing TDs, two to uh, rushing TDs, one offensive player of the year. Um, and the Jags have won six out of the last seven. So it's this is not a team you can sleep on, obviously. But the the entire point of thinking that Trevor Lawrence is so ahead of C.J. Stroud is outside of the realm of, of really any real thinking at this point. Um, so, you know, I, I think that the game is going to be really, really close. Um, one of the things to remember is that they the secondary didn't do great against Levis either. They they allowed uh, 140 passer rating uh, against Levis. They gave up two 40 yard bombs. So the secondary can be feasted on. And obviously, even though Noah Brown is likely out for this game, you got Nico Collins and you got Tank Dell. And and Tank Dell has been a Stroud's number one deep threat option. Uh, he has six touch, six touchdowns on the year. Four of those on are on deep throws. So Tank Dell to CJ Stroud is going to be huge. And we don't even know if Tyson Campbell is coming back, right? He's got a leg injury. Um, he's questionable. We don't know if Tyson Campbell, who is who is really the best person on the best player on the secondary, and we don't know if he's coming back. Um, you know, Jay Zones is questionable, but he should play. Um, and and so I I think that if, if if Tyson Campbell doesn't come back, this could be uh, a, 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 something you see in the first quarter where we come away with 14 zip. Um, you know, so as far as the defense, should I be other parts besides the secondary? Josh Allen has nine and a half sacks. Now, they haven't been crazy good as a unit hitting after the quarterback, 
But Josh Allen has a pretty good season. They're probably going to pay him after the season uh, is over. But, you know, it's not like we're slouches. We've got Grenard has eight sacks. Will Anderson has three. Um, we are better at putting pressure. One of the biggest things I, I think that we have to do, and I, and I know that Will Anderson did not practice, but I believe that, you know, it, he will play. It's the same. They're managing the knee injury just the same way they're managing Tunsil's knee injury that they don't really practice on Wednesday. So I think he'll play. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Same thing happened last week and the week before. Um, but here's the thing. Um, so uh, this is the stat I was looking at. Stra uh, Lawrence's passer rating under pressure is 57. 57. Stroud's passer rating under pressure is 71.3. So let them blitz. Let them bring on the pressure. And we should blitz more. We should put the pressure on because Lawrence will throw interceptions. Now, I actually think you're right, Jake. I think that Stroud could throw an INT here. Um, you know, the Jags have 11 interceptions, right? So I do think that, especially if Tyson Campbell plays, that, that um, you know, Stroud's going to throw a pick. But it's okay. We know that our defense can step up. We know that our offense kicks butt as well so overall obviously i'll give my game predictions in a bit but overall i think this game is going to be a tough game but i think the texans really got a great shot here yeah uh the, the goal is last couple of games you know last especially last week the Bengals game the panthers game we kind of went quiet in the third quarter uh the goal to win we, we can't be quiet uh we we almost went we almost did the same thing uh week three against the jaguars until Back ran it for a touchdown. Uh, so, you know, we got to get that momentum in our favor and just keep it there. Uh, don't don't let the needle move at all. Just keep it in our momentum. Like like VT says, uh, we put the pressure and we had the momentum going. There's no way we can't lose this game. But uh, it's, it's all up to the deep uh, – making making Lawrence, like he said, T-fraud. Uh, you got to <laughs> you gotta keep him keep him hurried and keep him off, off balance. Uh, that, uh, Jack, we know you about to have to leave. So what is your prediction of this game? I like the Texans in a close one, guys. Uh, I'm going to say Texans, Texans 28. We'll say Jacksonville 24. I think it's going to be a fun game. Uh, I think it could be one of those scenarios where whoever has the ball last kind of wins, but I'm looking forward to this one, man. I mean, uh, it's been a while as we kind of were alluding to since NRG has had, you know, some juice, you know, a real game quite like this. So, Hopefully Texans fans show up. There shouldn't be any empty seats for this one. Can you be in your damn seats? Uh, you know, at 12 p.m. when this game kicks off, no empty seats at all. Uh, this team has certainly earned that. But it, it should be a lot of fun. And look, you, you start to think big picture. They win this game. There, there's a path with that schedule after this to winning that division, of course, and setting yourself up nicely to go on a run. And what is kind of feeling like a wide open AFC right now, as crazy as it is to have that conversation. But huge game and. I have a lot of faith in Shroud and, and D'Amico having the team ready to go, so it should be fun. Yeah, uh, guys, um, we're we're going to send off Jake, but we but do not get off the live stream. We're going to keep it going. Uh, Jake, why don't you tell everybody where we can find you and what you got cooking? That way we can support you. Sure, you can hear me on ESPN Radio. Um, it's on ninety-seven point five uh, when I'm on nationally. So this Sunday night I'll be on from um, I guess it'll be eight p.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, local time, and you can hear me talking about all the uh, the NFL games, including the Texans-Jaguars uh, matchup. And then on YouTube twice a week, Aaron Wilson, who covers the Texans for KPRC, him and I host a podcast called Inside the Texans, and him and I talk about whatever's going on uh, with the Texans. So look for that on my YouTube channel, which is just my name, Jake Gasman. You'll see that twice a week. All right, Jake. Well, you have a wonderful night, and have a th happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll hope to see you soon. Likewise, guys, thanks for the invitation and you know, best of luck to the Texans, man. And and you guys are welcome. It, it took me once I stopped doing local radio five days a week in Houston, the Texans went from the worst team in the league to with the most exciting team. So oh, we, we appreciate welcome. it, Jay. Th thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving. You got it, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks again for having me. Oh. All right, good stuff. Well, we're gonna continue on the, the, the uh Jags game, VT. Yeah, so there's a couple of different things I wanted to bring up as well, because uh, there's a lot of stuff to talk about in their Jags game. Um, so I, I mentioned that, you know, T-Law did uh, throw for 262 yards. He had 119.5 pass rating against the Titans. Um, and like I said, the Titans don't have a good defense, right. and right. we do. So that is something to remember if you're looking at, oh, um, he just had a, a blowout game last week. 
we actually have a defense. Um, no, the other thing I, I want to say is that the similarities are in, in terms of the play calling. Are, you're going to see that because both teams throw 60% and run 40%, almost on the dot. It's like literally like one or 2% difference. So that's going to be similar. The one thing that is going to be interesting to see is the Jags have done a really good job against the run. Um, and so that is going to be something that's going that that if, if we can't run the ball, we can run the risk of not being able to win the time of possession, giving the, keeping the ball in Trevor Lawrence's hands and potentially losing the game. So we're going to have to find a way to run the ball. Running the ball is going to be important. Fans, I understand that you want to see um, CJ throwing the ball a lot of times, but that's how you get into problems, especially in big games like this. And, and this is basically a preview of a playoff game and you have to run the ball. Um, so the thing about it is that when you look at the stats and you see the total rushing yards, you can say, oh, they, they actually let teams run on them a little bit. But the the bigger stat, in my opinion, is actually yards per carry. And they're top five in, in uh, allowing that yards per carry. So, um, so the, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're top five. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. We're top five in yards per carry, but they're top 10. And so that is one of the, this is going to be one of the most difficult teams to run against that we've gone against so far. Um, and that's going to be a big problem because if we're splitting carries with Pierce and Pierce is unable to run the ball. And of course, if, you know, we give it on first downs, he can't hit it on first downs. And then, and then we get negative yards twice. And then we put Stroud in third and long situations this could be a, a long game. So what I what I hope Slovic does is that he you know doesn't become very predictable that, that he starts passing on first downs a lot and that he runs the ball honestly more on second and and in, and in third and short situations. So then you can set up those play action passes. Uh, the run game, like I said, is going to be strong. The other thing is as you as um, Jake mentioned, CJ asked that every, everyone get there on time and be packed. He literally said. Uh, now, this is like the third time in a press conference where he asked the stadium to be packed. So, um, you know, if, if you guys are trying to sell tickets, I get it. You know, inflation sucks. But um, if you can get there, get there and get there on time. He really needs a crowd. And something to remember, against Arizona, the crowd made a difference. The crowd noise forced, forced Arizona to waste a timeout. You know, you don't know how that game could have changed had they had an extra timeout. So the crowd, as much as you may say, oh, it doesn't really matter, you can force timeouts for the other teams. That can be the difference in a close game between winning and losing. So you are impactful here. Um, and the last thing I want to say is Texans are wearing all red, so wear all red when you go. Yeah, uh, most definitely. You know, I want to agree with you, BT, and I don't want to agree with you about, <laughs> about, about the whole um, stopping to run the Jaguars because – Outside of uh, San Francisco, what team has a good run back? What team is a good run, running team that, that they play? See, that's 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 they they haven't really faced anybody that's a great running team for them to stop them, right? Uh, and, and and the teams that they beat and and stopped the run, they jumped uh, ahead, so they really had couldn't run the ball, you know, like uh, Buffalo. Atlanta over there in, in uh, London. I don't know what Arthur Smith is, is doing, not using B. John every down to play, you know. Um, and I still think he got 100 yards that game. I'm not for sure. But I I don't think they are a great run stopping. I just don't think teams get to utilize the run as much as they want, if that makes sense. Like they they're, they play, play from behind, and it's kind of hard to run the ball when we're playing from behind. And last time when we played him, we know that story. We had Damian Pierce. I mean, he still had, what, like 68 yards? Uh, was it not terrible, but it's not good. Uh, so I think with the Singletary, might be a, a different story. Because even in that game, he did break out some big yards, uh, some big runs. So hopefully that if he is the main focus, and Pierce is just a rotational guy, which means you hope. Um, I, I think I think Singletary can be the game changer for this game, especially in the passing game as well. Well, uh, um, 
let me address that by also showing this comment because I want to address this and it's by uh, okay. one of her own here. Uh, actually, this this one, this one. Um, if he's T fraud, then why don't we want the ball in his hand? Well, one of the reason why I call him T fraud is because um, he's been th- uh, giving up the ball a lot, right? So um, he's been giving up the ball, but that doesn't mean that just because he gives up the ball a lot that you still want him to win the time of right. possession. Because you can have an interception and uh, and or takeaway, and if we don't produce any points from it, then we're allowing him to have more chances. To throw now we know that he can throw the ball the point is that he hasn't been secure with the ball he's had seven fumbles already and six interceptions that's 13 turnovers that's a ton of uh, turnovers that's one of the reasons why i call him t-front the other thing is that he's only had a uh, one 300 yard game so that's why i'm calling him t-front and why i don't want um wh- why i don't want uh him to have the ball in the hand the other question again uh from country i gotta i mean i kind of address this but what's the best o-line fit since juice is back the same thing that we're doing right now. Right, um, right. I would not change a, a, anything right now because of how well it's working. I can understand maybe a following week um, where, where you want to say, okay, let's see if we can put Scruggs as guard. But they view him more as a center than a guard anyway. They really didn't really get him here as a guard. I understand that he can play guard. Um, and, and I think that you know in a tough situation, they would. But I think that at this point, they want to keep the – uh, continuity that we have with the line because overall as before yes we can call out particular plays um that didn't run well whether it's Titus Howard or sometimes we might see something bad that tons less on but overall the line uh, from a pass protection standpoint has performed incredibly well that now they're picking up the run blocking right. changing it now would make absolutely no no freaking sense uh whatsoever in, in, in my point of view um this other question um you, know, I wasn't there at this game. The last time I was at a game match was last year during the Browns game. But I know us and you look alike, so you know there's a lot of injuries and things. Um, uh, so, and the uh, other, <laughs> um, and then the last thing here. So he gave up the ball four times the first half of the playoffs, and they still won. Correct. And the one of the reasons why they won though is against the Chargers. The Chargers have a shit defense. Um, you know, I mean, if you watch the if you watch the the last Chargers game and then you saw the press conference, I mean, they're even questioning whether or not Staley should call the defense. Uh, the I mean, when I say they have a shit defense, it's not because they're players; it's because of coaching. And the reason why the Jags were able to come back because because the, the Chargers simply have such bad coaching that they should have been fired. He should have been fired. Staley should have been fired last season. In all reality, I, I don't think he's going to make it this season. Um, But the reason why they won isn't because uh, Trevor Lawrence was just incredible. It was because the Chargers gave them the ability to do that. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I kind of go back to the offensive line. Uh, You kind of have to agree. Like, like now if if Drew Scruggs was this run blocking machine, then you would kind of put, yeah, let's, let's put Dieter at left guard, put him at center and move Howard back at right tackle. But he's not, he's more of a uh, pass protector. Uh, center so that way just yeah like you said leave it where it's at uh and just keep it keep it going because you're, you're right it's getting better so why why change anything uh and i completely agree with you on the chargers defense that's terrible and that's again on the defenses he hasn't really played any great defenses besides the 49ers and look what the 49ers did to him made him look like a chump change so, yeah. so this game is – and week three, I mean, it wasn't our best defense, but we still – we made some plays, like, especially on special teams. That's where – that's where it needs to get going as special teams. Uh, every three phases has to be on point. And what better time to do it than a division game? Um, so, I, I, I'm i going to have to say uh, – I'm gonna have to say it's gonna be a good game. It's, it's gonna be down to like. Did you give your predictions yet, BT? I, I did. Not, I, I did not. But you said you brought up special teams. Let me just say this: the right. one thing that I am going to be afraid of is Matt Amendola, who misses field goals. Yes, yeah, that's why I was getting into predictions. But yes, I have to agree with that. That's why we have to be on point on the other two, right? Like yeah. we, you know, we have to put the foot. We can't go anywhere conservative. We got to put the foot on the gas. Do not let up. I don't care if it's sixty-eight to three. Like who? I go cry to your mama. Like yeah. I don't care. I don't care who you are. Like make the Jack fans feel it. Uh, but VT, go ahead 
And uh, tell, us, tell us your prediction. Yeah, so I think it's going to be a very close game. I don't think it's going to be a, a, a game that – um, that we blow them out. I don't think. I don't think that in any case it's going to be. Um, even if you were predicting the Jags, I don't think it's going to be um, a, a blow up. But I'm going to show this uh, comic here by Frank Z because I think he's hit it on the money. It's really going to be a three point game. It's going to come down to a field goal, um, and and I think it's going to be 27 24. The one thing I could see that could change that is if they go on fourth down or or they do two point conversions cuz they're worried about Amandola which could you know have a, a little weird score but at the end of the day I think it's going to be really for a three point game 27 24 Texans take it um and I think it's going to be a close game yep and then our brother from another mother De- uh Mr. Crenshaw he's out to the strip hook club being uh, busy right now so he couldn't go on the show he got 28 21 Texans um look you, you know I'm a superstitious guy, right? Yeah. You know, you know my baseball stuff. Yep. I predicted to lose last time. Oh, you're going to do it again? Look, Matt, Amendola worries me. He worries me. So I'm going to say Jaguars 24, Texans 21. Oh. And, 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 and it's not just because I think the Jaguars can actually beat the Texans. I, 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 look. Every Texans fan, listen, because I know everyone's all oh, he predicts us. I I do predict the Texans to win, but <laughs> I, I got to keep it. I got to keep no. Well, what's your real prediction that you're really gonna give then? Because like not your superstitious prediction. Uh, I, man, I I think I not like my last one. That was completely out of fucking water. Uh, I think it's gonna be close to. I think it's gonna be probably a thirty-one twenty-eight game. Okay. I, I think we lose by a field goal because we can't kick field goals. So, I, oh, but you still think that we do lose? You think we lose this game? No, no. I, I, well, you're right. Uh, I, I think we win, but yeah, thirty-one twenty-eight. Thirty-one twenty-eight. Yeah, yeah, I mean, listen. The special teams kick. Uh, special teams matter, and the kicker is going to be an issue. But here's the thing: we can, or we can compensate. You could go on fourth down more. We can be more aggressive. Um, like I said, you could go for you know for two point conversions. Um, there are ways to do this, and plus, if he misses a kick, I'm not. I don't. I don't know if they'll. I actually think they'll pull out Dari to go ahead and do your thing again, because Dari was able to kick that. You know, was able to kick right. So um, if he misses one, look for Dari because uh, I think he's earned a roster spot here as the emergency kicker for the next ten years. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but because um, he can kick. So you know, worst case scenario, Dari. Get your ass out there. Let's go. Since uh, since you know, Crenshaw wants to comment and not come on the show, he says, speaking of ST, why haven't we brought in another kicker? Uh, bro, probably because there's nothing out there that, you know, it can can do better than what Amadola's doing. Yeah, Amadola's not doing anything good, but there's probably, like, the pickings is probably not great because he's not uh, – Bear Baron's not the only kicker that's been hurt this year. So the, the pickings are very slim come around this year. Uh, the only kicker that I know that would be available is Robbie Gold because because he didn't get another job after he got released. Um, but I don't know if he kept in shape in the offseason knowing that he left go. So, like, he may not be ready to play. So I don't think I, that I, they, I think he got picked up too from what – Oh, did he get picked up? Yeah, because I thought that he doesn't have a job because they was San Francisco uh, fans were were like after Moody missed that pass, they right. were, uh, missed that kick. They're like, let's get Robbie again. So I thought he was free. So I could be wrong, but I don't think um, I don't think he's he's ready anyway. But regardless, you have to imagine that they have called multiple kickers and they just weren't able to bring one on board. Um, so, you know, unfortunately we're stuck with him, with Amendola for another two games after this. Um, he's, Kaimi, a free, he's a free agent. You're right. You're right. So, yeah. yeah. So Robbie's the only other one. Kaimi, uh, they said four games. Um, so now af- after the Jags game, we'll have two more games after that. So we have to live through this just a little longer. And, uh, keep, let's keep it to the fans. We got a comment from Johnny Lambert, uh, Henry T full participant. Is back at starting Mike? No. I hope so, not. No. It should be Cashman. Got, it Cashman or Christian Harris. Like you gotta you gotta rotate between those two guys. Uh both those guys have been playing out of their mind at the, at that position. Uh we give Cashman the love. Which which seems to be I mean, that's where it should be going, right? But Harris Christian Harris has been playing out of his mind too. 
so you gotta go. Um, the only time you really bring Henry T in is is for run blocking like that. I, I, I mean, I I'll, think he's still the Sam, right? I don't think he right, loses that spot. Right. I still think he's a Sam, but I don't think he's a Mike. Right. Exactly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. But it, he's a liability when it comes to uh, the coverage, especially tight ends. And we're already the worst uh, team when it comes to covering the tight end. So hopefully, Ever Ingram doesn't have 150 yards and a touchdown this year, this week. So I, I just right. I, I hate to see it. Uh, Crenshaw says CFL guys are able to kick. Crenshaw, come on, buddy. <laughs> are you kidding me? Put, You're going to get a dude from Canada right now? <laughs> put, put, put those flaming hot Cheetos away, eh? All right? <laughs> come on, now. You know what that calls for, right? Watch it, dude, huh? Hot right. After bull wrestling some mooses. Come on, Crenshaw. What are you, <laughs> what are you thinking, brother? All right, man. Well, before we, we do got some NFL news to talk about before we end this show. Um, biggest one has to be Darius Leonard is now an unrestricted free agent. Uh, kind of shocked. He's been unhappy um, and he's been unhealthy. So the team, I, I, I personally thought it was going to happen at the end of this year. I kind of thought they were going to trade him at least. Uh, VT, what, what's your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I, I think that they wanted to trade him. The problem is his contract. That no one wants that contract. I mean, right. um, you know, you, you're paying anywhere between 17, I think 16 and 20 million, depending on the year, for the next four years, three to four years. That mm -hmm. contract is a reason uh, why, no one, why he wasn't picked up on waivers. Do I think that we're going to – Try to take a shot, yeah. I don't see why not. You wouldn't um, you'd be dumb if you don't, right? I mean, right. I mean, like, pick up the phone. Um, he would only cost four hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the rest of the season at this point. Um, for anyone that picked him up, um, the Colts are paying the remaining six million because no one picked him from the waivers. So I, I think you got to give him the call. The question is whether or not he would come here. Now, now he gets to choose where he goes because now he gets a. But he's going to negotiate a new deal. He's not obviously not going to get what he got at the Colts. So, um, you know, we're going to have to say, listen, we'll sign a long-term deal. You're not going to get paid anything really this year. It's, it, this is for next season. Show as you can perform and we'll give right. you a good contract next season. So um, he's going to be, ha have to be willing to do that. Yeah. I, I, I mean, if you, if any good team like the Cowboys, the Texans um, offer you a contract, you'd be dumb to turn it down. So hopefully, I mean, come on, Nick. You can't do any worse. Go, go ahead. And, uh, at least try. We, we've been, we have been doubters of yours. So prove us wrong, Mister Casario. The ball is in your court. Pause. Uh, go ahead and make your move. Well, Matt Canada out of the Steelers. Thank God they didn't fire him week four because we definitely needed it. Uh, he is the third when it has uh, third offensive coordinator to be fired between the Raiders and the Bills. Uh, it works for the Raiders, work for the Bills. BT, is it going to work for the Steelers? Um, I think it's going to rally the team together because I think that um, in a, not just a play calling and not just a play design, but I think the issue is going to be that um, – it's, it's, the issue is going to be that the team just needed him out of there. They did not like what he was doing. The type of offense that he was running was really just crazy, um, and especially for a second year. I mean, to give you an example of what this guy is doing and asking what Pickett is doing, and I'm not trying to um, hold any water for, for uh, Pickett, but just imagine, so you got, say, your three receivers out, you got your running back out there, you're, you know, um, what you have is you have each receiver on at least two option routes. So mm, now you're I talking like about thing. right, yeah. Right. So right. now you have six routes there. Plus you're having one of your running backs that you know if it's a pass play. Obviously your running back is is if he's not blocking, he's going out there and running a route, or he's going go for the check down. So now you literally have seven options. You have seven options that you have to go to, and this is a guy that is still in his in his second year. Um, you know this is not a vet. So how many options now? The whole thing is that it's not just seven options that the quarterback has to make, right? When you give an option, the receiver has to make the same option as the quarterback. And so if the receiver thinks that he should go in and not or or out and, and can you pick us on the opposite, well, you're not getting that completion. Right. And so it's an overly complicated scheme where they do this over and over and over again. And it makes it very, very hard for any sort of 
uh, development to happen. And and frankly, this this firing probably should have happened sooner. But Tomlin doesn't really like doing that midseason. I understand you want you know continuity. You don't want someone just you know start fresh like that uh, midseason, especially when you think you can make the playoffs. And they look like they obviously can. Um, but the problem is this type of offense just doesn't work. You have to be able to develop your quarterbacks is one of the things that Bobby Sloak is able to do is develop CJ Stroud. Of course, CJ Stroud was an easy reads, right? Yes. Right. In, in the beginning, Slovak cut off half the field, made made it a two read set, basically a high low system. You know, if, if he's if he's not open, go go here. You know, you got you got two options. You start that and then week by week you you install um you know right. some more of the offense, more of the offense. That's not right. what's happening. What happened, you know, uh, in Pittsburgh. So yeah, I think I think the Steelers' offense is going to look a little better. The interesting reason why uh, this need to be brought up is we're a good team now, right? So everybody in the AFC, things that happen in the AFC now directly affect us because if we do well and we do make it to the playoffs, what we do in the postseason is something that we haven't talked about, but we have a chance to do something in the postseason. I'm not going to make predictions on the postseason. Obviously, we're not there yet. But the, what's happening right now in the AFC is that we thought it was going to be really closed up. There were some leaders, right, where you had the Chiefs, for example, um, that was like, okay, they're definitely going to go to the Super Bowl. Um, you know, that's considered like, yeah, Patrick Mahomes doesn't have the receivers that, that he needs. They haven't been able to score. 27 drop passes in a game, bro. Like, Well, not in one game, but 27 uh, over, overall the overall, season. Right, right. Um, yeah, that's but, why. That's what I meant to say. But yeah, you're right. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and but the thing about it is they haven't scored once in the second half in the last three games. Mm. So they're not able to really finish games. Their offense is struggling. Their defense is kicking ass. Um, the Steelers have a weird offense right now. They have a good defense. They somehow win it in the fourth uh, quarter. Somehow, obviously not against the Browns, which we needed them to, but. Um, they have been winning games in the in the in the fourth quarter. The Raiders, everyone written them off, but as soon as they fire, um, you know, McDaniel's, um, you know, they win four games. Uh, you know that that you didn't think they were going to win. Um, Miami had a hard time beating Miami. One of those high powered offenses only beat them by seven points. You know, and and so the Raiders' defense, Max Crosby was insane. The Raiders, you know, they had these firings and it affected them to make them better. So, you know, these things are going to affect and, them. As we, and the Bills, uh, as soon as they fired the OC, uh, yeah. the offense started clicking. I mean, you, you know, you're right. Like, yeah. it's going to affect us. And, you know, you know, Chris is on, on, on the speed. He's watching us. So, you know what he's going to say about Kansas City. It's because they don't have Eric Benigny. So, I, I said it for I said it for <laughs> you. Chris, uh, I said it for you so you didn't have to. All right, my man. I, I got you, bro. I got you. Yeah, uh, you're, you're right, BT. Like it's it, it's going to affect us uh, down the stretch. Uh, even 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 didn't see look about say even Denver's on a roll. Uh, so yeah, because um, we're, we're getting better, BT. They they hate us because they ain't us. That's just I mean, just like all these Jags fans are salty because we uh, we might be able to take this to business someday. Cool. So, uh, brother, before we have to go, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. I I do want to say I am thankful to have you and my brother, Crenshaw, as my family on this podcast every week. So, thank you for, you know, doing this doing this journey with me. Uh, it wouldn't be the same without you two, especially uh, Crenshaw's hot Cheeto takes uh, and his pod moments. So, I got I gotta say the same, man. I mean, you brought me to this. You, you know, you messaged me and asked me to uh, be on the show, and uh, lo and behold, it's been over a year, and we're still doing it, and we're still kicking ass. We're slowly but surely we become the best Texans podcast. So I'm gonna tell everybody out there: if you haven't told your friends about us, share this so that every Texans fan you know, because it's gonna be the greatest. Uh, before we get off, BT. We're both fat boys. We both love food. What is your favorite Thanksgiving dish? So I love turkey. I love stuffing. I love Thanksgiving. Uh, I love the food of Thanksgiving. But this is going to be a weird one. What are the things that wherever I go, um, I'm going to a friend's house tomorrow. Um, and uh, what are the things sometimes I, I've done, prefacing it's weird, is that, you know, everyone wants fancy cranberries. Um, you know, whole berries, right? Like these, 
and and I grew up with the the jelly, the conceal, mm -hmm. you know, come conceal out again. Jelly, right. you know, make the whole yeah. noise. So I miss that. So I, of course I'm gonna I'm gonna eat the turkey. I'm gonna eat the stuff. I'm gonna eat the mashed potatoes and the mac and cheese and and everything that goes along with it. But I gotta have that old school jelly out of a can. Chop it up with a knife. Um, with with my turkey dinner. So I am a I, look. You're right. Like. What makes Thanksgiving is the turkey. Uh, it all depends on who's cooking the turkey. Of course, I'm cooking my, cooking my turkey, so it's going to be delicious because everything I, I do is great. Uh, but, man, you got to have sides. My favorite dish is green bean casserole. Like, mm. Mm, nothing is better than – come on, Crenshaw. Really, what is, what is stuffing? Oh, come on. As, as you used to like it, it's dried out just like your steak. So <laughs> you, you used to love it. Uh, Crystal says his favorite dish is fried turkey and lotus cheesecake. That's you know, I'm glad he brought up cheesecake. So, this is going to we, we know Crystal's weird and likes to steak, uh, well beef done. jerky, and you, yeah. you're crazy and you like candy corn. So, here's another thing that <laughs> the, decides if you're a psycho or not. <laughs> what is your what is your opinion on pumpkin pie? I like pumpkin pie, but I need whipped oh. cream with it. I can't have pumpkin pie uh, without whipped cream. Uh, if that's the only dessert, I guess I'll eat it. But you're right; like I'll get like this big this big of a piece, like this much whipped cream. Like I I hate pumpkin pie. It's, it's not my cream. favorite, but it's, it's always there on Thanksgiving. Um, if I'm gonna say what's my favorite. I will say, honestly, apple pie. I mean, I love me some apple pie. So if it's good apple pie. You know, the thing is, I cannot stand sweet potato pie. What? I can't stand, I can't stand sweet what? potato pie. I know. I know. It's weird. Well, you know what my favorite pie is? <laughs> I'm going to show Becky this. My favorite pie is Becky's pie. So <laughs> I got him. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, that's something you expect from Crenshaw. But <laughs> right, all right. right. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I thought you were gonna play the goddamn Boosie. Uh, but... <laughs> well, there's no pause there, that's your <laughs> wife. <laughs> right. uh, BT, again, man, happy Thanksgiving to you, especially to all of our fans. Tell the guys uh, where they can find you and what you got cooking, man. Yeah, you can find me on, on Twitter uh, at Brown Chubby Bear. I'm in a space, hosting a space, or co-hosting a space multiple times per week, talking about Texans. Um, if I'm not talking about the Texans, I'm talking about football. So uh, find me on Twitter. That's the best way you can get a hold of me. Um, I know a lot of people DM me and ask me questions a lot. I, I If I have the time, I'll, I'll answer. Uh, but Twitter Spaces is definitely the best way uh, to talk about Texas football with me. Yeah, you can find our brother Crenshaw at Pittsburgh Crenshaw uh, everywhere. Uh, make sure you follow him and you can find me at a one day one Texans. I'm working. I, I've been kind of quiet, but I am working on a couple articles for the fan about sports network. So make sure you check those out. And guys, like everybody says, it's easy to do the, the, uh, support us. All you gotta do is like comment and share the podcast. So make sure you do it. Uh, subscribe button, just click it. And like we said earlier, so every, uh, Texas fan of this show because they're going to love it. Follow us at Texas Fan Ball everywhere. And until next week, happy, have a happy Thanksgiving. And the division is ours. See you next week. Go, Texans. This is Crin Shaw Briggs and VT. We want the touchdown. We're not trying to go for three. And it's best if you get up out the street because them bulls out the pen and they about to stampede. Hey, hey.